Hello, I welcome you all to the 66th session of Guru Bodha. I cordially welcome Dr. Guruja sir to this session. Namaste sir. I cordially welcome Dr. Ragram sir also to this session. Namaste sir. I dedicate this and all of my works at the holy feet of Dr. H. Chandrasekhar Udupa. This class is made live available for easy Ayurveda weekly class subscribers. So coming to the topic of the day is Chavan Trash. Chavan Trash is not being made with all the 52 herbs. What do you think about the number of uh, reduced herbs by companies and its effic efficacy or effectiveness? And how to know if Chavan Trash contains all the ingredients? Uh, Guruja sir, uh, over to you sir, please explain uh, about Chavan Trash. Definitely this is one of the drawback of Ayurveda, we need to accept that. There are formulations very critically and very clearly mentioned in the classical text. But still, when it comes to manufacturing, a treating physician heavily depends on the manufacturer who supplies the medicines to them. And he believes that he has prepared the things as per the classical text with including all the herbs in that. But many, many attempts it may not be true because we don't have such a you know, studies or methods or tools to identify whether all the ingredients are present in this or not. For example, if in any chemical based drug, if they claim that contains two type of or three types of chemicals in that or molecules with so many MGs in that, that can be reverse analyzed and that can be find out through HPTLC or something like that. Then we can identify whether it is present or not in the exact quantities present or not. Everything we can find out. But such type of effective methods or tools are not ready or available in when it comes to the question of Ayurveda products. And previously when our Acharyas they used to do it, they meant that these things for the purpose of health of a person and they don't want to do any cheating in that. But now we are entirely in the society in the market is uh, totally it is a market driven and it is a business driven. So automatically the greediness and all those things will come into play. Otherwise you can observe that Chavanaprash is Chavanaprash which should contain all the classically what has been explained. But unfortunately in the market you will get Chavanaprasha plain, Chavanaprasha special, Chavanaprasha with Sona Chandi, Chavanaprasha with Mukta, Chavanaprasha with Ashtavarga. So many odd labeling or uh, typical way of uh, things have been mentioned. Even you can get Chavanaprasha chocolates, Chavanaprasha biscuits, so many things. But all these are uh, variants of Chavanaprasha which cannot be considered exactly to how the Acharyas have explained Chavanaprasha. Chavanaprasha means it should be the, with all the ingredients as, as described in the classical text. And any Chavanaprasha which is prepared with all these classical herbs which is explained as per the classical text will not be so tasty and uh, tangy to the tongue. Otherwise, if you observe in the market, you can find out a very tasty Chavanaprasha. But when we prepare classically, it will be not so much of tasty or sweety. It should be the way it should be by using when these herbs are used. So that's why when Chavanaprasha would be made out of uh, all the herbs, then it is, it is will have its own effectiveness. Or I can say what the Acharyas have very clearly stated as a Falashruti of that, all these can be expected out of that. But otherwise, when we shortcut the list of drugs into that and say it is Chavanaprasha, then of course then the result will also be same the result will also be cut down to some extent and some results may not be seen so that is the one thing second thing for the purpose of non-availability of certain drugs and secondly it is um, to cut down the cost manufacturing cost people are using the shortcuts and even sometimes the methods are being claimed shortcut all these things are not only going to hamper the chavana pressure and its ability it also brings a bad name to ayurveda that should not be accepted. So whatever it is there, it should be classically how it is explained. That should be the, the thing. And even we need to purchase and we need to try to develop or prepare the medicines as per the classical text. Otherwise, you can keep any other name. Don't keep the name of Chavanaprasha. Because it will be just defaming the Chavanaprasha in the name of Chavanaprasha. But it will not be giving the result of Chavanaprasha. So in these terms, if it is less than the number of herbs which is prescribed in the classical text then don't call it as a chavanaprasha 
called as some other prank yes, and i remember there were many uh, sub varieties of charm prash uh, with the prefixes and suffixes who were coming to the market and i think then uh, i rather drug control authority they came with a came with a rule that such tweaking of traditional names with their own names cannot be made then probably many of the prefixes and suffixes and additional things were withdrawn and one of the intriguing fact a factor about this charm prash uh, is the use of the term astavarga you know generally uh, some, some of the astavarga herbs are there in charm prash but you know calling them as you know here the astavarga herbs are also mentioned and the substitutes of them are mentioned long back still many people uh, you know claim it it has you know original with all the astavarga and all but with the experience of uh, it all comes to doctors prescribing doctors his own experience uh, with, with trial and error with varieties of charm prash that one can uh, know i mean you said you gave a very big hint that you know it should be more sourish tangy than very sweet ultra sweet uh, probably that and also over a period of time the prescribing doctor will gain his own experience and come to a better conclusion of a better version of uh, John Prash with a good company, sir. See, definitely, we, we cannot uh, simply just for the sake of, uh, because um, John Prash has been pushed to market in the form of a OTC sector, the over-the-counter product. That's the reason they made it somewhat um, friendly to the customers, uh, tasty, targeting audiences, um, in the grand, customers, uh, children, and that age group. So they made it tasty, they can be palatable. But unfortunately, that is not the thing intention was the while our Chana Prasha has been designed by our Acharyas. The Chana Prasha has its own intention and should be prepared the way it should be. You should not tamper with that or even tinker with that. It should not be done. Raghuram sir, do you have any uh, uh, any experience with Chana Prasha? Where you use, where you not use? Uh, very complicated question. Uh, wonderful formulation, but a complicated question. Many people also ask which company or which pharmacy Chavan Prash to use, uh, which to use, sir, which not to use, which is genuine. Uh, in this, probably we might lose the race as doctors because uh, uh, we haven't tasted the Chavan Prash. So, because Chavan Prash was the first one to get a recognition on even on the television on the small screen, right from our childhood, we have been seeing Dabar Chavan Prash, uh, somebody eating and running and uh, getting into the bus. Uh, competing with the old age person. Uh, there were so many ads which were commercialized. Mainly it was prepared for palatability of kids. Uh, probably most uh, pharmacies uh, didn't even use uh, the proper quantity of amla as uh, Guru sir rightly said. The sweetness and also the palatability because it was mainly marketed for the children. So that particular point was focused upon initially. Now people are uh, taking caution. As Guru Raja sir rightly pointed out, there are so many tests which can find out which uh, drugs have been used, which herbs have been used and which not, and a lot more things can be done. These things can also be manipulated in a way, but telling which companies Chavan Prash was the toughest question, so which we should use, because uh, we haven't tasted uh, Chavan Prash as such, which comes from different pharmacies. Such questions will be very difficult to answer. And uh, as Guru Raja sir rightly pointed out a couple of points, about the taste and uh, uh, the form and consistency of John Prash, that needs to be focused upon. That is the primary thing, the taste of amla, the taste of... Uh, uh, so uh, that is one thing. And uh, during the COVID period also, we saw that John Prash was uh, one of the... Uh, became one of the most popular. Suddenly it uh, rose to surge like Chavan Prash. So people who are not preparing Chavan Prash also started preparing in bulk like... Uh, Talents together, so because they saw that uh, uh, COVID period practice was not there, hospitals were not running, and Chavan Prash was advised uh, by the government and Irish authority also to as one of uh, the important medications to boost up the immunity. And many people started manufacturing Tom Dick and Harry. Everybody started manufacturing the uh, Chavan Prash by their own and selling them. Probably many people became even lackiers by selling John Trust during that particular time, especially those who had the business mode and modus operandi of uh, how things work situationally. So that was also done. So 
there are different forms of chawan prash me too when i tasted the different forms of chawan prash i found different different tastes so which herbs have been added which not uh, how genuine it is unless there is a trust factor between the seller and the consumer it is very difficult whether it is chawan prash or any uh, herbal formulation to tell that this is genuine it is so unless a person has total trust on a doctor who is prescribing now if uh, me or gurraj sir or uh, dr hebbar so if we uh, tell that this pharmacy is preparing the best chawan prash because we have tried over so many uh, patients and it is giving good results they are using genuine uh, products or we pre- we are preparing all by ourselves and it has all the ingredients so that trust factor will definitely uh, work so over a period of time people will start trusting because the results also show its way classical preparations shall not be manipulated and we are also not sure how many herbs of out of all these things are available in their true form so because many herbs they tell it is controversial uh, guruji sir being the expert of the vaguna field he can throw some light on this many of these i don't i don't know if they are genuinely available uh, herbs used in chawan prash or any other formulation where plenty of 50 to 100 herbs are there so what was used in charaka's time and sushruta's time and what is being used now whether they are the same herbs we don't know identification on the basis of certain studies have been made classification has been made whether things available as dashamola whether things are available as ashtavarga how the new they are we don't know even honey which has been used ghee which has been used so the quality again to comment on this particular thing it is very difficult having said that i have not got plenty of questions related to chawan prash uh, so if at, if at all i have got some questions it is about uh, the quality of chawan prash belonging to different pharmacies uh, again i had to go to some experts of bishaja kalpana talk with them if some queries such related queries are there and take the information and pass it on to my client and one more if you have like a mini pharmacy setup uh, ideally it would be best if you can prepare chawan prash of your own absolutely okay. absolutely doctor but this is i vote for this if we can do that so because we cannot cheat ourselves we cannot cheat ourselves so the trust factor of uh, the patients and the clients are very important and we know that we need to give results and uh, we know as doctors and we, with experience we know that we have to go by the chart by the chart given by the classics absolutely i agree with you and i mean i understand that it's difficult for you know every ayurveda practitioner to go with uh, their own uh, formulas at least uh, you know four to five local ayurveda doctors can come together and you know if one of them is leading then other people can help i feel uh, dr ebbar one dravya guna expert and one bishaja kalpana expert should be there in the team of preparation of medication uh, if it's it needs to be so because the quality check not only the quality check of the final product but also identification of usual herbs how genuine or not whether they are suitable to be used in the preparation or not that should be decided by the experts dravya guna rasa shastra bishaja kalpana experts i think they form a vital component in preparation of any uh medicate and also there are like many steps involved in the chawan prash the main pain point being the availability of these uh you know yes. these these many herbs in the availability and the big problem is identification dr bar yeah, so in the yeah in yes. the uh, you know in the kashaya 16 plus 19 so uh, 35 herbs are there in the kashaya which may become difficult but if so many of them are not available at least with some of them if, if it is made available it will be you know at least a mini version of the champrash gura sir your comments please see for any practicing physician it is expected that if he prepares himself then it will be best that is there is no doubt but practically it is not possible when we are practicing we will be concentrated on the practice orientation and when we shift our concentration to the manufacturing then we we can't give the same time to practice that is one point number one point number two see you cannot simply prepare a chawan prash it is a, a technique of cooking just like any other cooking it needs to be have expertise otherwise what will happen you don't know when to stop or when to heat then ultimately in your chawan prash as a moisture remains then it will spoil very easily it is not so easy to manufacture any of the things it will be done by repeatedly if you are doing and repeatedly you are uh, preparing those things then you will come to know what is that card is a technique of where to stop how to cook what temperature what vessel what lakshana should siddhi lakshana should come everything will finalize otherwise it will be very very difficult sometimes it will happen 
doing something like that. Yesterday's sambar was good and today's sambar is something different. Is something like the same comment you'll get in the house. Similar type of comment you'll get even in the practice also. So we need to be very very cautious in these things. Of course, it is a, a somewhat you can say a beautiful thing that if you could be able to prepare, but. Practical, it is not possible. Then comes the question: Is who is a genuine manufacturer who is very much concerned about Ayurveda? Whether he is done by any Ayurveda expert or Ayurveda doctor himself is doing his Ayurveda is not giving any pamper and show and advertisement. Simply manufacturing and giving Ayurveda this particular product is in the market since so many years and been used by many doctors and taste is not so good, but it is giving result. All these factors come into play. I mean, these things are understood, and we can come out. For example, and the lines of tasting, I could definitely say that Swamala compound tastes so good. You cannot simply say it is Chavana Prasha, but it is based or prepared out of Chavana Prasha or on the lines of Chavana Prasha, and a little bit of improvisation has been done in that, and that is very tasty also. Result wise also no good, but you cannot simply say it is chana prasha and giving the result. Similarly, there are companies that are producing chana prasha, but taste may not be good, but results are good. So keeping in all these things in mind, we need to check it up. And many a times it is very difficult for us to prepare any medicines by ourselves. Only some few churnas can be done easily, and some sometimes some oils can be prepared or ghee can be prepared. But when we go for a multiple combinations and even the big big formulations which contain so much of ingredients, first of all getting those uh, ingredients in right quantity identifying them in right thing and then preparing them in a the right uh, consistency it's very difficult task because it maybe sounds good that we uh, ourselves only prepared it it doesn't mean that if i prepare myself my chana prasha it will be best chana prasha i don't know whether i have exactly cooked it whether the color attained the proper thing whether what are the ingredients i used it is sim uh, is really good so there are so many factors pitching so that's why we need to depend on A certain companies which are at least not compromising on the principles of Ayurveda that we that we come to know that only when we started using those the company products then only we can say it is good or bad. Uh, going with Chavan Prash, I would like to uh, tell a small story. I used to purchase uh, Chavan Prash from one of my gurus, Doctor Nagi Reddy sir. I used to blindly see many people used to purchase medicine though he was in government uh, college. So he had a big pharmacy called Chaitanya. pharmacy which is now merged with some other company uh, uh, we also used to visit his pharmacy see the entire pharmacy was handled by his wife who was not educated very important not educated at all <clears throat> and she used to prepare all the medic all the medications all the formulations including the basti vasti dravyas the packing quant uh, quantity monitoring the pa uh, collections and everything she used to monitor once uh, myself and my dad had gone to purchase uh, some Chavan Prash uh, itself. So when we went, uh, so she was having a walk around her home. So she finished her walking and she came back. So what we observed was big uh, uh, vessels, which were uh, in in some vessels oil was being prepared, taila taila murchana was being done in some big vessel. Chavan Prash was being prepared, and they had two patent products, uh, Chaitanya Rasayana and Vajikara Rasayana. I think even now we can find it on Google somewhere. Chaitanya. rasayana was at that particular time it was used as one of the medications for uh, altering the cd4 count in aids patient and many people the medicine was sold like hot cake so he even used to tell that uh, combine the rasayana and vajikara rasayana in some proportion and give it to the patients of aids and also at the terminal stages of illness so those medicines and Ch- uh, chaitanya rasayana was one of the medicine which was prepared on similar lines of chavan prash most of the ingredients were similar and nagrati sir added a few uh, things he made his own formulation like customized and used to prepare that so many medicines were there and nobody to monitor because that was early in the morning 6:30 7 we reached uh, that particular place everything was being prepared so uh, the boiling so the all medicines are under the stage of preparation so i was really curious i asked her all medicines you have left it like this Uh, and you have gone for a walk. What if something happens? Because Avaleha is there, Taila process process is there. Everything is being prepared. Guruji sir pointed out a valid point, like the method of preparation and the person who knows has the knowledge of preparation. That is very important. Here we are speaking about an uneducated person, a lady who was pre- maintaining the whole Chaitanya pharmacy, and there was never a single complaint, never a single rejection of the medicine. And I personally used it for many years. Vasti churnas, taylas for anvasanavasti, chavan prash, chaitanya rasayana, vajikara rasayana, everything. 
I use and results were fascinating in compared to the known pharmacies because they, it was prepared with such dedication and Nagiridis are used to tell one thing it is always see if a person knows what is what and prepares number one and especially if it is a woman because she is also a homemaker and also she handles the kitchen nobody can prepare the medicines or the formulations better than a housewife telling that uh, she was uneducated she said in simple words see i have learned certain things over a period of time how many rounds of walk i'll do by that time what quantity of paka it will get Th these are the crude yeah. calculations which are not at all there in the text she used to tell by the time i complete these rounds or within this particular time span i'll go here and purchase some something and come back within these minutes within these minutes this particular thing so she's she doesn't know shloka she doesn't know the classics and all those things but still she's man, man, managing things there was not a single day an agreed service to tell i blindly trust her and have given the pharmacy to her hand because she is managing this since 20 years and not even a sing even if i prepare as a rasha shastra and vaishya kalpana expert even if i prepare i may go wrong she can never go wrong yes, sir. experience matters a lot and moving on to the next topic uh, very complicated uh, it requires a lot of experience uh, probably as complicated as champrash is the tinnitus where finding out the causative factor becomes very important because from depression to ear in anomaly anatomical anomaly to ear wax or aging many different causative factors are involved this can you please share clinical experience of tinnitus cases uh, what are some effective formulations and remedies and uh, i have found it it to be very difficult to achieve 100% result so i treated a few cases of tinnitus so first of all we should see as uh, half the question was answered by dr hebbar already it depends on causes it totally depends on causes and we need to see whether it is as a physician i am telling we need to see if it is a primary or a secondary tinnitus primary is uh, some organ damage and something has happened in the ear and then it has led to tinnitus or it is secondary uh, as already examples are given by dr hebbar maybe a depression a physical illness in ayurveda also uh, in panduroga acharya explains ಸಂಭೂತೇಷ್ಮಿ and our ayurveda medicines are so wholesome like even if we don't know whether we are treating primary or secondary by default also some medicines definitely give good results like using the uh, taila gruta and some rasayanas orally and also karanapurna so these things will definitely uh, give the results but very importantly find out the factor sanshepataha kriya yoga nidana parivarjanam the first and the foremost thing what we need to think about in almost all the conditions which we treat clinically is identify the positive factor and separate it so that's it that is the best form of treatment so identifying the cause again is difficult we need to go through a thorough history uh, with the patient and uh, the second step comes find out whether it is primary so whether the person had put something in the ear and uh, try to do something with the ear or such, there was some accident some blow on the head accidental fall so following which the tinnitus has come so directly or direct damage to the ear so or somebody has slapped on the ear so these things can be uh, considered there and coming to the secondary there may be wide array of uh, disorders due to which uh, as i mentioned one of the examples as pandu here the treating pandu roga is very important if we treat pandu roga the karna cheda karnada will come down the sounds uh, the tinnitus or whatever the symptoms uh, the patient is experiencing will come down so coming to the uh, different approaches which we can make uh, in treating tinnitus is definitely uh, karana is or ear is one of the shrot shrotrendriya also we call it as karana is the visible organ ear and the indriya soul of uh, the ear which is maintaining all the functions is the uh, shrotrendriya so the indriya so the functional component of the ear so here when we are telling about uh, rutrendriya it is said to be one of the important seeds of vata so first approach will be to handle vata uh, in these conditions whether it is primary or secondary just see if the vata symptoms are there 
and try to handle it never like uh, karuna purana so even before doing karuna purana have a thorough ear check see that uh, there is no perforation and other problems then you can go ahead with the uh, karuna purana to be very safe so binva taila akshara taila there are quite a lot of medications which we can use uh, for karuna purana and then coming to so here we will be addressing vata in its in, in one of its seat that is uh, shrutrendriya or the karana next we will come to the murthni taila so murthni taila is uh, the oil procedures which are done on the head i have found very good results whenever any medicine or any treatment is not working out shirovasti especially among uh, shirodara shirovasti shiropichu shiro abhyanga all these are called as murthni taila procedures the oil procedures done over the head so we have a treatment where a cabin is built over the head like kativasti and oil is stored there so we can use i have also used yamaka like kruta with the taila both combination as a bridge for vata and pitta outstanding results we'll get mahamasha taila kshirvala taila a plain kruta murchita kruta in combination we can use only taila or kruta or vata uh, taila and kruta so to see that vata and pitta symptoms are handled properly so murni taila will give uh, definitely it will give very good uh, results shiro abhyanga has been mentioned as uh, those are prone to have this tinnitus uh, shiro abhyanga is a simple procedure which can be practiced at home itself and shiro abhyanga has been mentioned among the dinacharya procedures abhyanga has been abhyanga macharet nityam among the abhyanga pada abhyanga and shiro abhyanga are inevitably involved so when we are doing this it can be uh, preventive also and next coming to the most important procedure is uh, chaturudha vikaras the diseases above the level of the collar bone the head the sense organs that is the seats of the sense organs and all those things nasya is very important nasya is very important to therapy we have to include nasya uh, in the treatment of uh, tinnitus so nourishing oils like shirabala 101 danvantram 101 mahamasha taila these things will be very good uh, for uh, administration of nasya and then coming to basti since we are we are speaking about uh, vata if nothing is working out see vasti is the primary treatment always it is the numero uno treatment for vata but here we need to use it as a brahmastra last weapon to handle it because many times tinnitus may be a simple uh, thing and it may go away if it is not even responding to murthi taila and other things we can either use murthi taila shiro abhyanga with vasti so combination ideal combination never use nasya with vasti so because that is uh, uh, giving Uh, sneha through two roots is not uh, uh, recommendable basti is one of the best treatments again to take control of uh, vata again as i said to treat primary conditions like pandu etc uh, identify those diseases and other uh, simple treatments are krutapana or yamaka pana gruta with taila so to balance vata tavala gandusha absolutely tavala and gandusha with gruta or taila again plain gruta plain tila taila and also plain go gruta can be used Uh, for uh, such purposes and also those medications which have been explained in ummada and tapasmara prakarana can also be given here in this condition like saraswata gruta uh, brahmi gruta sarutarishta so so many things so here it is a big uh, uh, list again and uh, primarily uh, consider tinnitus as a mi- miniature vata vyadhi and have all vata approaches as possible including the diet nidana parivarjana so uh, So many many people uh, so during summer or uh, during early winter they sleep over the terrace so heavy winds are blowing so even coming in uh, coming uh, the ears coming in contact with heavy breeze even walking out in the breeze ask the patient to tie a muffler and all those things if they are having ear problem uh, when we are speaking about ka vaigunyas and also the sroto dushtis even before the manifestation of tinnitus the person may have some ear related problem ask the patient person to be very careful about that and keep on addressing those issues so some neglected issues can uh, lead to uh, these conditions a sinusitis can also a chronic sinusitis can also lead to tinnitus so there are many other causes uh, we need to identify the causes segregate them primarily treat vata nasya and shirovasti and vasti will be the primary lines of treatment and uh, identifying diseases like pandu and treating them and according to our yukti using vata hara chikitsa so like uh, maybe you are using a kashaya or a gruta or a taila what is best for vata what is best in that particular condition and if it is it is secondary process secondary 
uh, condition can i say is what medicines uh, we need to use according to the situation we can make the choice and use and i am reading a book called as uh, breathing an art of uh, art which is lost in the times uh, something like that in that uh, in that the author explains that over a period of time the brain size of the human beings yes. is constantly increasing and he explains that over a period of 2 lakh years a uh, brain size a uh, brain size of human beings from the early primates uh, has almost tripled and that is causing a lot of pressure on the uh, nose area and pellet that's why you know if you if you go to say 1000 year before skulls they were not having this teeth derangement problem now we have that because again the pellet is pushed down over a period of evolution and he explains that like there is evolution need not be always beneficial for the species including human beings for example if we started being erect and you know we have a lot of back problems and other things even the neck issues and all because we were you know slanted and now suddenly we are erect over a period of thousands of years and he explains that uh, even food choking was not a, a phenomena in the pre previous thousands of years that has become very common tooth derangement teeth derangement and lack of sufficient cavities etc probably guru has said that's why including nasia as a early regimen or putting ear drops which is a karna purana is also explained uh, as part of dinacharya and taking care of the cavities of the head becomes so vital for uh, you know preventing this type of basically when we grow up from a childhood towards the uh, adulthood and to the end of our life we will be moving towards the vata increasing period and vata plays a very important role in even cell division as well as vata is very important in maintaining all the functions in the body because other two uh, doshas are pangu we all know that they are lame it will be carried out by the vata to different places and the, all the functions that you can take you can see all the pathways are controlled in the body by vata and vata has to do all the functions and definitely when we move towards the higher vatic functions or vatic things in the body we will find the effect of vata on all the tissues similarly on the nerves and the tinnitus is one of the condition which usually we come across in old age it's more common in old age that is the reason because it is of vata period all the lakshan i mean uh, treatment modalities as just like uh, dr ragam sir has very clearly pointed out all the vata hara chikitsa using the grita and taila is the only and the best way out to that as a medication we can add even further pratvata chintamani or even uh, mahavata vidvamsan rasa or even samira pannaga rasa or ekanga rasa according to our needs and yukti we can add all these things and accordingly we can take things to the further level and a treatment modality i mean the protocol maybe even a sarivadi vati is also used as the important uh, medicine for this condition even saptamrita loha is also used this is one of the important uh, preparation for these type of conditions and of course there are uh, danvantram 101 kshirabala 101 and then uh, neurocare drops or something like that all these things are towards the vata harana effect of uh, those things and even the nourishing the neural tissues so if these things are taken care of definitely we will find it out and uh, very importantly we can manage the tinnitus the apart the other point what you will find out regarding the evolution and all those things for a time being if we accept that uh, over a period of time maybe thousands and thousands of years our brain size has increased and uh, i hope even that probably even based on the brain size even our skull size and even our face size is also increased uh, somewhat accordingly adopted we cannot simply say that only one part will be available and the other part will remain silent that may may, may not be it is totally in hypothesis whether to accept it or not to accept it or accept it according to our convenience that is totally a different issue we need to take it with a pinch of salt yes sir there the author argues that because we are not like chewing meat anymore and because everything is cooked and ready to use the oral cavity is not that much used as previously so the lower part of the face is underdeveloped uh, so that's just you know i mean he's he has done some research and uh, what not uh, one more important formulation uh, uraj sir has given a big list of medications wonderful medications again uh, saraswatarishta plus balarishta and the uh ashwagandha rishta so this combination i have used in tinnitus and other uh, vata vikaras so wonderful combination this combo is again 
look out for the tolerance of arishtas so the same thing same uh, grutas can also be mixed i feel uh, if you even saraswata arishta is uh, the best one brahmi saraswata this or kalyanaka gruta is also one of the best one uh, for tinnitus and vata uh, conditions so again as i said unmada uh, apasmara chikitsa whatever medicines have been explained there they are really wonderful in uh, treating vata rogas also so and the vata roga anyhow we have a context saraswata bala and uh, shugandha arishta so that particular combination yeah i, I have a doctor in uh, ayurveda doctor in ichal karanji maharashtra who only deals with this uh, spine and neural neurological disorder he uses the combination of saraswata arishta and shugandha arishta in combination for many months together to treat uh, epilepsy case uh, very well and uh, th- there's a question here that how should the ear wax uh, in the ear be cleaned i had ear buds are not not the right option yes there are obviously not the right option uh, one of the in the easiest ways that uh, these modern doctors use they give something like soli wax but uh, it is just a, a combination with um, like turpentine oil everything is mixed even our uh, simple olive oil is also used even the olive oil is also used that uh, olive oil has a capacity to mix with the ear wax and make it a solid mass they they usually advise it for 5 5 days and then uh, you know it becomes a solid mass and then it becomes easy to remove but we should be very careful we should be having the proper headgear to you know visualize the uh, uh, ear canal uh, and and also guruji sir a regular karna purana or at least using a few oils as your ear drops is also a, a strategy to you know avoid ear wax build up sir definitely that is the reason acharya has given very clearly all the navarandras in human body should be given the oil that's why even acharya vagbata very clearly said you have to put oil to every hole in the body that's the reason you have got uttara basti we got basti we got karna purana we got nasya we got oral application bodily application every shiro abhyanga is not left any part of the body that's the reason and for ear wax we have got a beautiful preparation in our ayurveda that is apamarga kshara taila available in the market apamarga kshara taila wonderfully works in the ear wax and easily and otherwise even simple a very clear uh, coconut oil also because previously when we were very young our mother used to put coconut oil to our ears that is the reason we used we usually they, they used to get all those things uh, the karna ghuta what we call it is karna our ear wax very clearly comes out with a, with a soft soil, solid mass and uh, using apamarakshara taila is wonderful thing and of course uh, practicing the karna purana will always uh, avoid formation of a very solid and painful wax and you know, its complications there's also a question on honey uh, nowadays getting a good quality of honey is challenging how can we identify the quality of honey uh, there is this water dissolution t- test you know if if honey is put usually usually doesn't dissolve uh, very rapidly uh, whereas if it's added with sugar syrup uh, then it dissolves very rapidly very clearly i have got my own uh, way of uh, getting a good quality honey i'll suggest to the vendor that see you also have your children and whatever you do cheating with your uh, people who purchase you who, who feed you and your family and if you cheat them you will be in a karma siddhanta you will going to receive all this back i want honey from you very peculiarly for the purpose of medicine so don't do any adulteration whatever you want to charge you charge it but i want a very pure one in that narration if you discuss with the vendor definitely he won't do anything and he will give you the best quality one that is what usually we have seen and of course there are many other ways even uh, fire test is also explained and if, uh, on the paper if honey is poured and then it is uh, been lit with uh, fire it will not should not make a crackling sound or something like that there are very many tests have been developed but still as rightly pointed out getting a pure quality of any oil getting a pure quality of ghee getting a pure quality of honey or even any raw medicines is a very very challenging nowadays and there is also this uh, honey plus vinegar plus water uh, ideally it should not form that is forming uh, i mean with uh, 
you know, I, I really, as an Ayurveda doctor, we should be always vigilant with the quality of products that is sold. Just as the label is good, <coughs> packing is good, we should not be carried away. There's a question here that won't oiling ears make the oil get inside the ear canal? Nothing will happen. We have experienced it and we have used it. Nothing will happen if you put oil, few drops of oil into the ear. Of course, we should make ourselves very clear that our tympanic membrane should not be ruptured. There should not be any issues with the, like uh, chronic separative what it is, media or anything like that, or even any holes in the tympanic membrane. That should not be there. Otherwise, nothing will happen. And we can, we, we were very effectively, we have used and we are, uh, it's a pratyaksha pramana. We have used it and it will be very, very uh, soothing to the eyes as well as ears. Uh, uh, there's a question that, in in cold climates and in winter probably coconut oil is not a good oil to put in the uh, ear because it again get can get solidified sir. definitely during the winter season even uh, shirodhara nasya karnapurna all should be think before you doing it that's the reason we need to you know, take up the you know consideration of all these things uh, the where we live in what is the age group of the patient what is the diseases he is suffering from whether it is for the roga harana or whether it is for the maintenance of health keeping these all these things in mind then we need to do a practices and these type of practices also to be done with keeping in mind whether there is no mega chadita dina that is there is not a cloudy wind or cloudy days or even cold winters so it uh, typically been uh, adjudged based on our yukti whether to do it or not do it like that and in the last class, I think we have discussed regarding in the, in the winter places like in uh, most part of the America and the European places. Even though the winter is very harsh outside, the inside the house, it will be completely they, they maintain the temperature uh, things with the many other uh, modalities and the modern day technique. So in that conditions, you can put it no issues with that. That can be done very easily. Uh, thank you, sir. And there is a question on like one year aged honey. I have seen references like a one year old honey being better in terms of its medohara effect or weight loss effects all those things are better with the one year old honey whereas new honey can be nourishing and uh, you know can be kapha increasing as well uh, all the kapha decreasing attributes are given to the one year old honey the question is, uh, it is said that one year old honey is more balanced can honey get too old or is, is there such a thing as too much, too aged honey? Definitely. One year aged honey and a fresh honey definitely have differences. And aged honey, uh, that is one year aged honey is a very good uh, kafahara and medohara. There is no doubt about it. But how to identify it? Whether we have to get it from the market with the labels, uh, observing its manufacturing date. Or otherwise, we need to purchase honey and put our own label and keep it there for one year then it becomes one year old honey. This is the two methods where we can believe in. The third point is too much of old, definitely we become too much of Purana, the honey, then there is a breakdown and uh, I think uh, dextrose crystallization will occur in the bottom of the honey. That is very common. Do you recommend discarding honey after a certain period of time? or No, I don't think so. We can um, do it off. No, there is no requirement as it is to be thrown up, but there is no expiry for that as such. If it is properly kept and it is um, devoid of moisture and all those things, it can be used for many purposes. Does honey when crystallized have the same effects? There is this Madhu Sharkara explained. No, um, definitely Madhu Sharkara when it is disintegrated, definitely they, we cannot accept it as a totally honey as it is because it has um, broken down his physical nature. Definitely certain actions of that will be lost, but still it can be used as a Purana honey. Some of the effects could be seen. From uh, Rajanikan to it says, Purana Shodhana Sandhane, Purana Samaropana, Dishu Sadharanya, Madhu Hitam, Tattulya, Madhu Sharkara. So they are giving a hint that it's used externally for healing the wounds rather than taking it internally because there would be obviously some changes with its qualities. So can honey be used for nasya? I don't think it's used. Uh, 
I have not used any time uh, honey in the nasira. I don't um, even recommend for that why that needs to be done. I don't know. Even uh, some question was there that uh, honey was heated and that smoke was taken for nasira also. I have not tried all those things. Uh, but um, um, heating honey itself is again as the principles of Ayurveda. So I don't recommend that. Even I have not used uh, honey or I have not seen or used honey. Uh, any pharmacia it, it's, it's always good to refer to that apamarga tanduli adhyaya in which acharya charaka has clearly mentioned almost all possible ingredients for like nasya vamana virus and etc so if it's not there probably not a good idea and uh, so honey for swishing of mouth also called kavala and gandusha because of ranahara effect and also kapha nirlekana effect probably it's is good for like a oral thrush that can be done to some extent but for kavala and gandusha acharya's recommendation was most of them were oils and ghees it was um, and later it was some kashayas but there is no harm in using honey for mouth ulcers or something like that where a person is suffering from such type of things or the pitta dominated conditions or burning sensation something like that or there is an um, like uh, gutka chew you are consuming gutka for long time and has been developed um, fibrosis as such, as such type of conditions definitely he can use it for the purpose of kavala and gandusha it will help to heal the things so this is liquids for gandusha from asangradiya fats oils ghee honey with water shukta formata gruel even madhya uh, mamsar sa Mutra, Dhanya, Amla, varieties things that can be used. Of course, it depends on. And also, there is a reference that you know, for, of all the uh, liquids available for Kavala and Gandusha, <clears throat> uh, Pila is the best, as rightly pointed out. So this is from uh, Astangriya Kavala Gandusha chapter, chapter number twenty-two. When is Kavala and Gandusha to be done? It, it is usually on the empty stomach in the morning. So same kavala and gandusha is been used by ayurvedic community but it has been made more popularized by the term oil pulling that's what a very the western western world has come out with this oil pulling and they started using for this oil pulling the what are the oil available even sunflower oil olive oil they used started using it but the intention behind that we need to understand that kavala gandusha's intention is to control the vata and kapha at that places but primarily for vata that's the reason to maintain the sturdiness of the teeth to maintain the mouth health or you can oral cavity health or buccal health so such type of things they have been used and of course kavala and gandusha one is totally covering the mouth with the full of its thing without moving the liquid the another one it is half full and it is made to move by blowing the air into that and making it a gargling yeah people also recommend to drink coconut oil sesame oil and peanut oil etc is it okay to uh, take these oils on an empty stomach uh, it, it all depends on the you know for what condition it is prescribed it is definitely not uh, a recommended practice to take these oils as a part of like healthy routines not mentioned if the disease demands based on the <coughs> based on the disease uh, such practices can be prescribed uh, well that that brings to the wrap of this session see you in the next next group of the session next week namaste